Hey everyone, so in front of me here, I have got an authentic new old stock Nixie tube manufactured back in 1980, let's see, 1986, 39 years ago. And today I wanna to not only try this thing out for the first time, cause I've been pretty obsessed with these things for quite a while now, to the point where about two and a half years ago, I got a bunch of nichrome wire and even some tungsten wire to try and make my own Nixie tube, which obviously didn't go too well, but it sort of worked, but that's besides the point. Because the main reason I'm making this video is because one, I'm pretty obsessed with uh, old electronics and stuff and two I want to try out this Nixie tube driver that I found on eBay as well as seeing if I can use these um DuPont connectors that are meant to be crimped onto wires and stuff to make them breadboard compatible and basically the reason I want to use these is because I can just tell by eye I've got a feeling that these might fit on the bottom of here so I want to try that out and see if I can not only power up this Nixie tube but also save quite a bit by using these cheap uh, connectors. So I'm sure that quite a bit of you watching are familiar with Nixie tubes. They're obviously quite an old technology. Um, I believe they were featured in one of the Monsters Inc. or Monsters University movies. I think I read that somewhere. But anyways, these are an old technology and they were pretty popular in the Soviet Union, in the USSR. And at least to me, that just makes it even cooler because it's from such a long time ago. So if we take a look at these sides here, we'll see that it has, of course, the NH12A, which is the type of Nixie tube and some markings here, something that looks like a reticle dot and 0786. And then on the other side, we've got, I've seen this on some old Russian stuff as well. And then OTK70. So apparently other than the um, model number itself, the NH12A, um, this is supposed to be a date, so 07 of 86, so July of 1986. So that's pretty cool, but now let's actually get into how we're going to power this thing up. So I have no idea how to actually drive this thing. The only experience I have with neon based bulbs are these tiny indicator things. So I went and did a quick search to see if I could find a guide online, which I thankfully did, on a website called Hackaday. I will leave a link to this in the, descrip uh, in the uh, description. So basically, it actually seems quite straightforward. It takes uh, 170 to let's see it takes around 170 to 200 volts dc um input on the pins and then the way that the pinout works is if we look at the bottom here we'll see there's a tiny arrow on the glass and that is pin one and that is the anode pin so that is going to be connected to our high voltage our positive high voltage output from our driver here via a 15 kilo ohm uh current limiting resistor so here i've tied together two 7.5k resistors and put some heat shrink and electrical tape just to make sure there's no shorts. And then the way that we illuminate the individual digits on here is just by connecting the high voltage negative to each one of these digit pins, which are the cathode pins. So I've got two high voltage converters here. One is a generic one, and this one is a specific one meant for Nixie tubes. And it has a little potentiometer on here for adjusting the voltage. But anyways, um, I went with the specific one here because while this one would work most likely, it's a DC to DC high voltage converter. Um, I went with this one because I just wanted to, I wanted a better chance of it working. And what I'm going to do now is connect the uh, multimeter to the output of this and then give this thing 5 to 12 volts, which is the operating voltage for this board. Okay, so I've got 10.55 volts ready to go on this power supply here, and I've got the output of the high voltage output connected to the multimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and power this thing on, and we're getting about 170 volts DC out. And of course, we can adjust that with the onboard potentiometer, but 170 is just fine for the Nixie tube here. So I'm going to keep it at that, turn this thing off. And then go ahead and see if my little idea with using these DuPont connectors works to connect to these pins here. So I've gone ahead and cut some off camera and I'm going to test it out on one of these random pins here. So let's see if it can fit onto there because it looks like it's going to fit. I just need to jam it in a bit and look at that perfect fit. So let's get this thing back in focus and I'm going to go ahead and begin wiring this thing up. So I've gone ahead off camera and connected my 15K resistor to this Wego connector with the um, DuPont connector and a wire coming out the other side. And then I've also got just a DuPont connector connected to a plain wire. So if you remember the anode pin, pin one, the one with the arrow is the one where the um, 15K resistor is gonna be connected to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that right in there. And then um, I'm gonna connect the um, other one to some random pins. So let's do this pin right here, like that. And the rest should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna connect with everything disconnected. I'm gonna connect the um, high voltage positive output to the um, anode pin. There we go. And then connect one of our cathode pins, which is gonna be one of the digits, to the high voltage negative output. 
And with the um, high voltage converter now reconnected to the power supply, let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it turns on and what digit we get. Ready? In three, two, one. So nice, we got the digit eight. It's not super bright, but looks pretty, uh, pretty nice, pretty cool actually. Okay, so I've moved it down by one pin. Uh, so let's go ahead, keep a focus on that and turn the power back on in three, two, one. And we got the number nine. That's so cool. Okay, so let me keep going down the pins. You know what, I've got an idea. It's not the safest, but I'm gonna turn this on. I'm just gonna go and tap these pins one by one, ready? So let's go ahead and begin with this pin. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's six, seven, eight. There we go, that's the right way around. Nine, and zero so there we go so all of the digits are working as expected which means that we can now move on to introducing an arduino to hopefully begin the first steps of making our very own nixie tube clock so let's go ahead and begin with what i've got in front of me here so i've got an eight channel relay module because the relays that can handle the high amounts of voltage that are needed for the um, actual nixie tube and then connected to that i've got an arduino uno which is off screen so that arduino mega over there is just for display so if i go ahead and plug it in it's a pretty basic program it's gonna restart that thing. It's a pretty basic program. It's gonna cycle um, between every single one of these relays every five seconds or four and a half seconds. Um, and basically we're gonna be hooking this thing up to the Nixie tube and have it cycle through the characters, or why do I keep saying characters, between the digits every five seconds. So the um, plan is actually relatively straightforward. So I plan to have the anode pin, just like before, connected with the resistor um, to the, um, what is it, to the high voltage positive. And then I'm going to connect the normally open pin on each of those um, relays there to each of the cathode pins here. And then on the com, I'm going to have the high voltage negative connected again to each one of those relays. And if everything goes to plan, we should hopefully be able to control the high voltage Nixie tube with a low voltage Arduino. So let's go ahead and begin by connecting all of the COM ports on the relays here to the actual driver. Now, the way I'm going to do this is because the driver only has one HV minus output, I've connected or I've taped together two uh, five port Wego connectors and I've connected those together and put two wires into one, giving us eight free ports here. Um, and then, so I'm gonna connect this to the Wego connector for the HV minus output. And then each of these are gonna go to each of the COM ports on the relays. So our first connection is gonna be connecting that block of Wego connectors to the um, HV minus like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up all of these um, levers here. And we're going to hook all of these up to the COM ports. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these into all of their ports for the relays first before we put them into the uh, wiggle block. There is relay number two. I was looking through the camera there. It's got to go in here. So with all of those now inserted, I'm gonna just flip them up to get them out of the way so we can put them into the Wego block and not have it be so messy. And for our final one, there we go. So with the wires looking relatively neat here, now it's time to actually hook up the actual Nixie tube with the wires that I made. Now, um, this is gonna be a little bit more tricky because I want each relay number to correspond to the digit. So I want relay number one to be uh, digit zero, uh, relay number two to be the digit number one on here and so on. So what I'm gonna do is map out the um, pins and write it down on a piece of paper and hook it up to the Nixie tube accordingly. So I'm gonna fast forward once again as I connect all of these to the relays and then we're gonna hook it up to the Nixie tube. So while I'm busy wiring this thing up, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. 
featuring thousands of lessons in everything from science and technology to programming, data analysis, and math. Brilliant gets you hands-on with lesson concepts to help you learn and improve critical skills through interactive problem solving and tinkering, rather than just reading a wall of text and memorizing. Plus, Brilliant's lessons are also designed to begin with the foundations first before helping you step up to the more challenging problems, which makes it much less intimidating to explore new concepts, allowing for more opportunities to learn and build an understanding from the ground up. Not to mention that Brilliant also has an app which makes it easy to follow along with your lessons no matter where you are and explore new topics so you can stay on top of reaching your learning goals. Because after all, learning a tiny bit every day is the best thing you can do if you want to learn something. So to give Brilliant a free try, go to brilliant.org slash Lab, scan the QR code or click the link in the description and you'll also get a 20% off of the Brilliant annual subscription as well. So let's start off with the very first relay here, and that's going to be relay number one, which is going to go to Nixie uh, pin number two. So that's going to be the pin right here. So let's go ahead and grab that from relay number one. And let me zoom in a bit here. So the angles here are going to be kind of awkward, but it's going to go to pin two. Let me look at it directly, not through the camera. Force it in. There we go. We have the first one connected. After that, for relay number two, it's going to be going to Nixie pin number 11. So that's going to be, that's going to be this wire here, going to pin number 11 on the Nixie tube. Pushing really hard to get that in, there we go. And after that is relay number three, and that's going to be the pin right underneath. So Nixie pin 10. Relay four, which is this one, is going to go right beneath that one as well it's to Nixie pin number nine. It's kind of hard to get that on there. There we go. Next, relay five is going to go to Nixie pin eight. Look at that. Relay six to Nixie pin number seven. Look at that. Relay seven to pin six. Oops. And since for this first test, we're only doing uh, eight pins on here, eight, eight uh, digits, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the final one. So that is relay number eight going to Nixie pin number five. So two, three, four, five, right beside that one, like that. So we should be all hooked up. So we're missing two of the um, pins here. I will add those later if it turns out to, if it ends up working. So the only thing left here is to connect the anode pin. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that resistor there to pin number one, which is our anode pin, like that. Pin number 12 is not connected and we should be ready to go. Okay, so I managed to twist these wires. They're pretty stiff. So plugging in the Arduino again, that thing is going to reboot. As soon as it does, turning on the power and okay, there we go. Nice. Now this should count up one, Every five seconds, take a look at that. Two, it should go to three. Let's see if we got it right. Yeah, three, <laughs> that is so cool. Four, I actually got it right the first time. I cannot believe, I cannot believe it. Five, next one should be six. Yep, and then seven and then eight. And if that works, I'm gonna add some extra relays. Seven and final relay zero. Okay guys, I'm back. I think I've got it. So I added two more relays and we now should have access to all the digits. Okay, so I've turned off the lights overhead and I've dimmed the other ones as much as possible so that the camera can still hold the focus. I'm going to plug in the Arduino again. That thing is going to reboot. I'm going to power on and look at that glow. Let's zoom in even more. Look at that beautiful glow. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Now I just focused onto it so you can see the grid, but that looks really nice. Such a nice retro look to it. Beautiful. I really did not think I'd be able to pull this off. This is so cool. <laughs> like I know this is old tech, but it is still pretty cool. You've got to admit, it's pretty cool. Nine and it should go to zero. There we go. So I think that this is ready to be upgraded into a clock in part two. 
But uh, anyways, if you can't tell from the clicking noise, if I turn on the power supply, I just updated the code to update the um or change the digit every second because that's as close as I can get with one tube to demonstrating a clock-like performance basically because I thought of connecting my real-time clock uh, to the Arduino for the outro, but what am I going to do with that with only one tube? Because I've ordered three more and I'm going to make a clock out of this, but with only one tube, there isn't much I can show with the real time. Like, am I going to show the last digits of the current seconds? Like, there isn't much I can do to make a cool outro. So I think this is a cooler outro than that would be. So I think this is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for over 55k subscribers. And I really, really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do leave a like and or subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one.